before Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese, Evansville was a typical Midwestern industrial town struggling with the Great Depression. Hoping to land new defense contracts to assist allies already fighting in Europe, Evansville's business, labor, and political leaders were working together. Their work in the summer and fall of 1941 positioned Evansville to win many early contracts. As Evansville firms won more contracts, citizens went to work for the factories that would provide planes, ships, bullets, and other wartime necessities. At the start of the war, Evansville employed 18,000 factory workers, but as more and more job positions opened up and were filled, Evansville ran out of space. Housing became a large problem for the city. By March of 1942, around 40,000 defense workers would be employed in city factories, and at the peak of production, 84,000 workers would be employed in Evansville. With thousands of new workers and their families moving into the city in a short amount of time, many people needed to find temporary housing for the duration of the war. Initially, most people rented out any shelter they could find, including garages, sheds, attics, spare beds, chicken coops, and even gas stations. When these spaces were filled, the government had to do something to accommodate its essential factory workers. One of the first federally funded housing projects to address the issue were the Armory Apartments, aptly named due to their location near the National Guard Armory on Rotherwood Avenue. Construction began in March of 1942. They included basic amenities made by Serval, a company who had a factory in Evansville. The neighbors filed a petition for an injunction to halt construction, saying the utilitarian apartments did not fit the style of the neighborhood. Eventually, the project was halved in size. When these apartments weren't enough, trailers could be used as a cheap solution. A new developing trailer park, Pleasure Park, started to help the situation in August 1942 as a 19-acre lot was used to park around 150 trailers which families could live in while they worked in the factories. Despite having license disputes, the trailer park was reported to have some of the best facilities in the city. Like many improvised housing projects around the city, problems occurred and had to be fixed. For example, water pumps had to be added after a deadly fire on Christmas Eve of 1943. After shipyard workers reported having to sleep in their cars, a large project was opened. Four new locations, Fulton Square, Park Home, Gatewood Gardens, and Dixie Manor, would together contain 1,500 prefab units made for cheapness and quick assembly and disassembly after the war. Some of these buildings were taken down months after being set up. To accommodate the Evansville Ordnance Plant on Divan Avenue, a project next to the facility was started in April of 1944 and named the Diamond Villas, introducing hundreds more apartments. On top of this, a hundred trailers were added to lots near the plant. Despite the temporary intentions for the housing projects, some lived on long after the war's end. Returning veterans created a need to keep some apartments. Gatewood Gardens remained until 1960, and Fulton Square and Diamond Villas are still lived in today. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.